What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. Guys, this is an off-the-cuff segment about something that I kind of already spoke about and complained about to my members only section. If you want an extra piece of content every single week and access to my members only Discord chat, please click the join button next to the subscribe button. It's like $4.99 a month and it's essentially YouTube's version of Patreon and it really helps me out as a content creator. So please join the ranks of my certified T3 bots. Okay, so... It's like adjacent to what I was complaining about on the last members only episode. It has to do with a G-Shock Frogman. I'm going to be honest. You already read the title, so you know. I'm doing my boss baby hands because this is kind of a precarious a precarious episode. Because full disclosure, Casio G-Shock, they've uh, sponsored me in the past. All right. And we are actually collaborating on another episode in the future, in the very near future. So I love the people at Casio of America. I love the people at Team G-Shock. They, they treat me very, very well, and they know that my viewers are predominantly G-Shock lovers. So I don't want to say the people at Casio G-Shock have lost their mind, but I cannot see myself purchasing a G-Shock for this price. We're going to get into it, guys. Um, I'll go ahead and tell the time. It is 1044 a.m. Let's get down to business. I'm speaking about none other than the Casio G-Shock Frogman. Now, I have one right here, all right? This is my personal watch. This is a Casio G-Shock Frogman Limited Edition Royal Navy, and this is the analog version, right? And uh, this really made waves, no pun intended, when it first came out. They G-Shock made an analog Frogman. First of all, the, the G-Shock Frogman for as long as it's been around, has been one of the most sought-after G-Shocks. People just love it. When they came out with an analog version, it was incredibly polarizing. People either loved it or they hated it. And uh, I think it looks pretty cool. There are some definite downsides to this watch. Uh, namely, it is enormous. I'm a big dude with, with above-average wrists. And still, uh, it makes me look like a child. So, um, every time I wear that watch, I kind of feel like I need to drink a little bit more milk. Mama. I need to, like, put on a few more pounds because it, it's, it's just an, an enormous watch. That watch, I've complained about being very, very expensive. This is a $2,000 watch, guys. For a G-Shock. That, that's that's kind of crazy when you consider... Um, I actually don't have any other G-Shocks in the office right now. Uh, when you consider that most G-Shocks are, like, 99 bucks. You know, that, that's that's like, I think the average price of every G-Shock I own is probably like 99 bucks. Um, but G-Shock recently just took it a step further with this one, the new MRG Frogman. So this is the MRG Frogman, MRG BF 1000, titanium armor clad. So enough with this resin stuff. By the way, guys, if it says MRG on, on the dial, the, the G-Shock's going to be like thousands of dollars. Just a little tip. Behold the full metal form of the MRG, now with a uh, with a highly airtight, excuse me, I thought it said all right. I have astigmatism in both eyes, guys. Everything's kind of double vision. Behold the full metal form of the MRG, now with highly airtight structure delivering ISO, 200 meter water resistance, rating the shock resistance structure with titanium exterior houses. The watch, wait, with a titanium exterior, got to clip it. Just kidding, we're... There's no editing on these episodes, so forgive me. Um, houses the watch's dual identities. Ooh, a Gemini, like me. Or maybe just a sociopath, also like me. The titanium exudes a profound, powerful sense of presence. That's, that's a very professional, uh, fluffy way of saying the watch is enormous on your wrist. Um, powerful sense of presence. The assortment of multiple components gives the structure an impression of intricate beauty. Uh, the meticulous attention to detail extends to every facet of the uh, componentry and the finishing. An MRG diver's watch crafted with the level of passion for the design befitting the flagship line of the G-Shock brand. Five grand. That's all, that's all you really need to know. It's a titanium frogman. So it's essentially just the analog frogman with titanium. And it's $5,000. Let's go ahead if uh, there's any more media photos because I don't have one in the office right now. I mean, hey, G-Shock does really good job with their media renders, right? 
their team over there is incredible with, with, with their photo stacks and everything. So they know what they're doing. When I look at that and I look at this, I'm trying to think if there's any like huge, huge, huge differences. If anything, this has more detail on the dial. I've done a review on this, guys. I'll link it in the description below. Um, but the titanium one is titanium, right? And I don't remember if this one has an ISO rating, the one in my hands, but this one uh, on screen clearly does. Another difference that I can see is here on the crown side, you, see, you have the crown, different knurling. Uh, this is... I mean, I don't have my macro lens on the streaming setup, but uh, this has like knurling, whereas the one on screen has more of like diamond serrations. And then you'll notice on my G-Shock in my hands, the pushers are uh, angular. They're flat and angular, whereas the ones here on the MRG are round and recessed. So there are some definite differences um, when it just comes to initial... Uh, like visuals, but I'm not so sure. Let me see if this one actually looks better than the one that I personally own. Comment in the comment section which one you like better. This this new one, the MRG, is is you know two three thousand dollars more than the one in my hands right now. Uh, if I could get any G Shock, it would honestly just be this one or the Arctic Explorer. This, this one's my all-time favorite. It's, it's Again, these are very expensive G-Shocks. Even the digital ones, which are not these premium analog ones, are over 600 bucks, right? This is my favorite G-Shock. It has the, the gold furniture, the, the, the gold accessories, gold tone. It just looks really badass. Easy to read at a glance. The complications aren't super, or the functions aren't super complicated, I should say. Um, whereas this analog one, there's no display, right? On the analog frogmans or frogmen, I don't know how, how you're going to pluralize a, a watch on the, uh, it, it's to know which menu you are in takes f familiarity and, um, a little bit of guts and hope and a prayer. It's much easier. Like with my mud master, right? The triple sensor there's a screen, there's a little display at the bottom. So when I get into the settings and I start using the crowns and selecting things, it lets me know where I am. Um, it's not that way when it comes to these uh, analog frogmans, frogmen. <laughs> let's see the case back. All right, so that's also different. I act, I'm gonna be honest, and again, you guys can say, oh, Jory's biased. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. That one looks cool. I actually prefer the case back of this one. I prefer the case back on mine. It's matte finished. Also has a frog, but this frog's holding an anchor. And the frog's eye is... Uh, man, I wish I had my... You know what? I'm going to zoom in here real quick. Beep, boop, beep. Enhance. Enhance. One second. So you guys can get a better view. I don't know if you guys can see this. But the frog's eye, right here, looks exactly like the screw head. Right, it correlates with the with the screw head over here. So I thought that was a really nice touch. All in all, I'm not so sure this MRG looks better than than the ones the one that I have, and it's not just because I'm biased. There's a nighttime shot showing off that LED. It's not backlit, obviously, because there's no screen. Um, so what is the takeaway here? Right, made in Japan, shock resistant, ISO rated, keeps yourself in time, stable solar power, beautiful polished metal. Well, the takeaway is everything's getting more expensive, period, right? Blame whoever you want for that. Um, but another takeaway is uh, these these G-Shocks, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm in the market for that, right? For that amount of money. For $5,000, there's a lot of other watches you can get. And here's what I mean. And I'm not dissing G-Shock. And I'm not just saying that because it's like, oh, they sponsor me. So I just, I need to be careful here. No, no, no. The reason I wouldn't buy a $5,000 G-Shock is because for $5,000, number one, I can get a plethora of other watches. But 
you don't need to spend anywhere near $5,000 to get a phenomenal G-Shock. There are insane, crazy, very cool, very tough, interesting, diverse catalogs worth of, of various G-Shocks that you can get for a couple hundred bucks and often just under a hundred bucks. So this is actually a compliment to G-Shock. There's so many really, really, really awesome G-Shocks that you don't need to spend nearly this amount of money on. But I mean, G one cool thing is that G-Shock's roster is so broad that they will offer things for under a hundred bucks. And I guess they will offer things for $5,000 and up. This isn't even the most expensive G-Shock we've seen, guys. I've shown you G-Shocks that are like in the tens of thousands of dollars. So it, it like, you know, these things are crazy. But I know whenever I complain about price, after everyone gets the, the Jew jokes out of the way, the next thing is, oh, you just, you don't understand. Thing, everything's expensive now. Have you seen the gas prices? Everything's obviously more expensive. Yeah, I'm not happy about that. I understand inflation. I'm a capitalist. I'm not happy about this. Um, because guess what? When, when everyone's hurting financially, means they're probably going to spend less money on my business, and I want money. So I want everybody to be doing well so that there's people spending money with my business, right? Um, so I understand basic economics. Uh, but that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about, you can spend thousands of dollars on a G-Shock like this, but I'm going to tell you right now, this $2,000 G-Shock doesn't bring me even as much enjoyment as my like DW5600, my olive drab one, which was like a hundred bucks or my Neo Tokyo, which was $99. So that's it. Just wanted to give my two cents because I literally just got an email from G-Shock uh, about this release and I don't mean like business wise like they, they didn't they didn't even send it to my business email and, and I have connections over at, at Casio of America um, I'm saying like I'm on their list from my personal email and I just got an advertisement for this and then I looked on my Instagram and like 20 people are are lighting me up about this $5,000 G-Shock so just want to let you know guys please join the channel memberships and I will see you over on Discord. And uh, fear not, because we are going to be seeing each other in two days, right? Saturday live stream. Be there, be square, 11.30 a.m. Pacific. We're bringing it back, baby. We did it last week, and it was a whole lot of fun. We're going to be doing it every Saturday till I die. Love you guys. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Enjoy your G-Shocks, people, and don't feel the need to spend a bleep ton of money on them. All right? Love you.